Hey guys, welcome back to our series on our preliminaries for recursive macroeconomics. In this video, we're going to talk about Blackwell's sufficiency conditions, and uh, I'm going to throw in a little bit something else at the end. Let's go. So in our previous video, we learned about the contraction mapping theorem, which tells us that our functional equation has a unique fixed point, uh, which would be our policy functions at their optimum. It does not tell us, however, if a operation that's being applied to a function is a contraction mapping, meaning it doesn't answer the question of, is this an operation which pushes this function towards its time invariant optimum forms? Fortunately, we have a tool by which to evaluate uh, if the operator is sufficiently a contraction mapping. This is called Blackwell's sufficiency conditions. So formally, Blackwell's sufficiency conditions state let x be a improper subset of our real number space in the l dimensions and b of x be a space of bounded functions which maps elements from this group x to our real number space and d right which is our metric being our sup norm let t be a function which maps b of x which is our space of bounded functions to itself such that it satisfies monotonicity, right? Meaning that the order, the ordinality of these functions will be preserved, right? If we go and we have a contraction mapping acting on it, or we have this function T, we have, we're not saying that it's a contraction mapping yet, acting on it. And secondly, we want discounting, uh, which is that if we go and we make, you know, F plus A, right? It's gonna enter in uh, and it enters in uh, linearly, right? Then this contraction mapping is gonna take that A and it's going to just scale it by a factor of beta where beta is between zero and one. If these two conditions are satisfied, then we can say for certainty that T is a contraction mapping with a modulus beta. Note that it's possible to have a contraction mapping which does not satisfy these conditions, but are in fact contraction mappings. Notice how this is called Blackwell's sufficiency conditions, not Blackwell's necessary conditions. So um, this is the next part of the video, which is kind of my own thing. In the next two slides, I'm gonna show you some of the implications of dropping one of the assumptions of Blackwell's sufficiency conditions and whether or not we can visualize contraction mappings that don't satisfy these conditions. This may be inappropriate for actually understanding uh, the material in its truest form, but uh, I think I found it useful. I mean, obviously, if you're a student taking uh, this course, discuss these charts with your professors, and I'd appreciate any comments regarding what I've done here, whether it be for the good or the bad. So let's talk about visualizing a normal contraction mapping. Uh, so let's talk about what's going on. So if we look at our y-axis, our vertical axis here, right, we have this t raised to the power of n, which is our, you know, the number of contraction mappings being applied to some initial uh, v naught and k bar. So k v is a function of k a bar as opposed to k because we want to understand how our functional form is going to change, and as our functional form is going to change, the output is going to change and along the horizontal axis is n which is uh, the number of contraction mappings applied uh, what a normal contraction mapping should look like is that we should see convergence in the functions meaning that we should go and see uh, convergence th to a optimal uh, v right which is our optimal value function so in terms of visualizing a contraction mapping that is monotone but possesses discounting, uh, we can we can have something like this little curly guy here, right? Where clearly, um, you know, it's it's not monotone, but it's we have convergence to a V here, which is what we want for a contraction mapping. Uh, it makes it makes sense that this is a contraction mapping, and uh, I guess it is a contraction mapping. So in terms of uh, visualizing a contraption mapping that is monotone but not discounted, uh, we have to go take into account first uh, the fact that this is a set of bounded functions, meaning that there are bounds on these, on these functions. But we can have really anything going on in the intermediate part. So without discounting, uh, we can have these sort of intermediate flare-ups, right? We can go and see right where uh, 
we have a concave curve and then just starts, you know, just lifts up again, becoming a concave curve again, converging at, you know, our upper bound of C, that would be our uh, V star. And uh, that would be considered a contraction mapping, at least I think so. Um, so this is the video. Let me know what you think about the charts. Are they helpful? Are they useless? Let me know. Take care.